G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're going to be looking at a severe case of parasitic flatworms on soft corals and we're going to be doing a treatment and showing you how to effectively treat for this horrible little worm. Here we are at Tall Towers. Now this reef tank has a few little problems that we're going to start to get on top of. There are some aptasia, there are turbo snails breeding out of control, and most of all, there is a severe infestation of parasitic flatworms on three of the different corals in this tank. First of all, they're on this sarcophyton leather, which is pretty much fully retracted. We've just done a bit of a, uh, algae clean on the glass and that has uh, caused it to withdraw, but it does mean you can very clearly see all of these little flatworms. They're also on the sinularia, and this sinularia is almost purple with the color of the flatworm. You can hardly see the green of the sinularia through the flatworm. And we've also got flatworms on these palithoa behind the sinularia. So let's have a close look at these flatworms and why they're a problem for these corals. You can see most clearly how severe this infestation is on the sarcophyton. The, the flatworms are these little sort of maroon ready dots and there are photosynthetic flatworms. So in the same way that corals and plants derive nutrition through the light, so do these flatworms. And one of the biggest problems that they actually cause for the corals is that they block the coral's ability to photosynthesize. And when there's a heavy infestation like this, it's really damaging to the coral. And whilst this coral was a little bit out before we did the clean on the tank, it's actually uh, typically quite withdrawn. And hopefully today we'll do a treatment, get rid of these flatworms, and we'll see an improvement in the health of this coral but also the others that are affected in this tank. The treatment we're using today is Salifert Flatworm Exit. And the biggest problem that you have when you are treating for these types of flatworms is that there are toxins in the flatworms that they release as they die. And so it's important that you remove as many of the flatworms as possible by siphoning them out. So we'll do that in a sec. Then we're going to put four drops per 20 liters, which works out to be 100 drops in this tank, up into an area in the, uh, of high flow, basically where the wave maker is. It takes about half an hour to an hour for the flatworms to die, and so we'll watch to see that, and when they start to die, or after they die, we're going to do a large water change to hopefully remove as much of the toxins from the flatworm as possible. So let's start by siphoning out some of the flatworms. It's been eight minutes since we put our treatment in the tank for these flatworms and you can see that the first thing is the flatworms start to get agitated. They start to move around a lot more. They get quite erratic in their motion. And the second thing is I'll start lifting up off the coral and floating around the tank. What I'm most interested in looking for is the behavior of the fish because if the fish start to stress out, that's when I need to get in and do a water change. So far they're looking okay, but I don't want to push my luck too much. I think that I'll probably be doing a water change on this tank in the next 10 minutes or so, but we'll see how it goes. Um, definitely the worms are not happy and we can see some of them floating around the tank. So this treatment is definitely doing the job. So let's keep watching the tank.
It's been 20 minutes since we put our treatment in and there are quite a few of the flatworms that have let go of the coral and are free floating around the tank. So our treatment is definitely working. The fish are still looking okay, so we're not gonna do the water change yet. We'll probably uh, do a water change at 45 minutes if we don't do it beforehand. But I've got our hose set up so that as soon as we want to do the water change, we'll start draining and it'll be a very quick process. been 35 minutes and not quite as many uh, of the worms are free floating as I would like so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a rustle with the scraper and see what happens. Definitely having them in, uh, like free floating around the tank, is gonna be better once we start to drain water out of this tank. Hopefully we'll suck as many of them up as possible. But I think also it just helps with uh, speeding up the process, but it also is gonna potentially release more toxins and uh, I probably, probably uh, am a bit surprised by how many of the worms are, are in here. Didn't really look like this much. So uh, I'm definitely gonna wanna do a big water change very soon. It's been 45 minutes since we did our treatment and the bulk of the worms have released and are floating around the tank. We're going to take the floss out of the uh, filter socks because I think that there's probably a few worms that have been collecting in there. But we'll do the water change, remove as much of the toxins as possible and uh, then we'll have a look and see how the remaining worms are going. We've done our water change and the tank is looking okay. It is very important that for the next 24 hours that we monitor the tank to ensure that the fish and the corals aren't being affected by the toxins released by the flatworm. Now I like to keep some carbon on hand so that if we do see any negative effects on the fish or corals, we can very quickly and easily put the carbon into the filtration system so it can pull out those toxins. I also would do another water change if need be. So we'll monitor this tank and we'll come back in a week's time and we'll show you the results. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.